This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're gonna be getting our hands dirty in a good way in the bakery. We're going to be rolling our hands out on some flour, making some dough, making some pies, because today we're gonna be talking about Pie Town from Renegade Game Studios. This is sort of a dice worker placement game. Uh, it takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play. It plays two to four players. So let me show you what it's all about and I'll see you on the other side. The object of the game is to score the most points and you'll be doing so by both baking and selling pies at the market. The game is played over multiple rounds. Each round players will one at a time in clockwise manner will be placing dice from their break room to different places within their storeboard to do different actions. And the amount of actions you'll be able to take during a round has to do with however many workers you have on your storeboard that have been hired. At the beginning of the game, you have two to deal with. I'm going to go over all the different actions now. Now, at the beginning of the game, you always have two workers to use. You can hire more later. And in this case, they start with very specific values, and you never rolled or moved these dice unless told to. Now, you can take one of these dice and place it here on the orchard of one of these dice spots. Let's say I put the three here. This player can now select any three ingredients that touch where this is. That's from this hex, this hex, or this hex, because those are the three that are touching here. So this player decides to take all three of these rare ingredients and place them in their storage. Now notice at the beginning of the game, you can only store a maximum of eight ingredients. I have six, I have room for two more later. After you do one action, it'd be the next player clockwise and so on and so forth until all the workers are gone. But I'm just gonna go through all the other actions. If you bake, you place your die on the bake, and you can bake a number of pies depending on what level this is. So I could bake up to two pies. Now the types of pies that you can make are shown here. This is three apples with three common ingredients. This is two apples and one rare ingredient, and this is two rare ingredients and one apple, and this is the secret recipe. If you remember, the secret recipe is going to be two apples and one rare ingredient, but they're the three that make up your secret recipe that you selected at the beginning of the game. So let's say the two pies, one of them is going to be my secret recipe, and the other one is going to be a common and two stars, because I have three apples, which would be right there, and I have three uh, rare ingredients, which would be one, two, three. Now when you place and you bake these pies, you place them all in one big pool, you don't let the others know which one is for which pie, and so always when you're bu building your secret recipe, you always want to build at least one other pie, otherwise the other players will know exactly what your secret recipe is. So in this case, I'm building two pies, I'm building one like this, and one with the secret recipe, and you just put them all in one pool and let the others figure it out. At this point, the other players can make notes on their boards as to what you're building, and they can try to figure out what your secret recipe is over the course of the game. So you would place, take all the ingredients that were here, and you would place them back into that ingredient bag that you originally seeded the orchard with at the beginning of the round. You'd then take one pie token for each of the pies that you've baked, and you'll place them down at the bottom here. And they always slide down as low as they can go in this. So we've now baked two pies here. Now each pie is gonna get you a certain amount of points depending on the kitchen. You start here and you'll get one point. We'll talk about upgrading this later, but that is baking pies. Now in this example, we baked our own secret recipe. However, if through deduction, you figured out what you think is another player's secret recipe, you can take the ingredients that you had, place them in your hand, and secretly show those three ingredients to the player that you're trying to bake their secret recipe from. That player will secretly look at that and tell you either, yes, you've been able to bake my secret recipe. In this case, you'd put your own pie token as shown previously. Or if they say no, they don't have to tell you how many were right or wrong, but you would take the three ingredients that you were using, placing them back in the bag, and you do not get to bake that pie. You can also decide on your turn to sell pies at the market. In order to do so, you take your die, you place it on a spot, and you can either sell all of one column or all of the bottom row. So if it was this player, I might go like this, place this here, sell bottom row. So we'd sell all of these, and each of these is worth the points below. So this is seven plus four plus three, so 14 points. You also get to add the number of the level of your die. So this would now be 17 points because we're adding three to 14. You'd also get to draw two ingredients from the bag. And then these would all go back into your supply and these would all fall down. Also keep in mind when you sell a row or column of pies, 
the opponents whose pies are sold will also get points. For example, if I went here and we sell all of one column, if we sold all of these, I would get three points for this, but the green player is gonna get three points for each of these, so six points. Now I'm gonna get these three additional points for playing here, but the other players are still getting points for their pies and their pies would be coming off as well going back into their supply. Now, if you wanted to hire, you would place one of your die there on your turn, and you would take one of the dice that was off the side of your storage board at the beginning of the game, and you'd place it here as a value of one. You'll be able to use that worker next round. Now, if you go on the upgrade spot, you can do one of the following. You can upgrade your bakery, which would remove this lock and allow you to place two different workers on the bakery to bake pies throughout a round. If you upgrade the kitchen, you'll now receive two points for every pie baked instead of just one. And if you upgrade the storage, you now can hold 14 ingredients instead of eight. Each time you go here, you're only upgrading any one of these three. Now, there's a certain minimum number that you need to be able to place on certain spots. I'm gonna go over these later. I wanna go over the basic actions first. When going to the pie convention, you can decide to assign a new starting player, which is giving this to any player, including yourself. Or you can change one ingredient of your secret recipe, and you do this if you think or know for sure that somebody knows your secret recipe. You can take one ingredient out and put it into this bag and pick another one from it to place in here so that you always have two commons and one rare ingredient. There's two locations in the game where you can be spied on or spy on other players. The orchard is one of them. In order to spy, you would place a die worker on top of another player and it has to be at least one higher. So this was a level three from the purple player. This player could place anything higher, in this case a four, on top. You would take the difference. Four minus three is one. This green player would get to go into the secret recipe box of the purple player and secretly grab one. And that's because it's the difference of these two. And they would look at this ingredient. The purple player does not know which of these ingredients has been spied on, but they only get to look at one of them in this case. Later on, a third player might go here and go on top of this player. A five on top of a four, again, they could look at one, but they're only spying on the player that's directly below them. The other place you can do this is at the market board, which is where you typically sell the pies. Again, the player can go on top. In this case, a six on top of a three. This player gets to see all three of the secret ingredients of the green player. And again, when you do this, taking the action of the board is not mandatory. So you'll continue going clockwise, taking one action with one of your workers until all players have placed all their workers. Then it will be the end of the round and you'll be pulling all your workers back into your break room. But this is an important part that some of the spots in the game require you to move levels up or down on your workers. For example, the orchard, after you're done and you're pulling it back, you must increase this by one. So this would go from a three to a four and you would place this in your break room. When you hire, the one that was uh, starting at a, at a one would come in as a one, but the one you placed here would be minus two down to a one. This is important because it means the least level or the smallest level that you could place here is a three because I could not place a two or a one because this would go minus two and I don't have a level high enough to do that. So to go into higher, you have to be a three or higher. With upgrade, you have to be a two or higher because you minus one. The bakery adds one, and then depending on the action you took, it'll either add one or minus one. So if you were taking this, change one ingredient to secret recipe, it would have to be at least a two to be able to place this down to a one once you bring it back to the break room. In the final bake-off, each player gets to guess the other player's secret recipe one at a time. When this happens, one player will pick out manually the three ingredients they think are their secret ones. They will secretly show it to that player. That player will say whether they've gotten zero, one, two, or three of them right. And you'll get a certain amount of points, either positive or negative, depending on the outcome shown here. But you can decide not to guess and just get zero points. Each player will get to do this for each other player. At the end of that, you get to see who's winning on the score track. Now I had heard about this game early last year and I was super excited about it. Reason number one is fun theme and artwork. Uh, food is always a fun theme for me in general, uh, but pies, I love pies. Uh, and so I like the theme and the artwork is sort of cute, uh, very uh, cartoonish, but it has a nice little flair to it. Uh, I enjoyed it, I think it fit the theme well where it's a light theme, a light game, but the game actually has a little bit more going on then I'd say the artwork and the, the art would suggest because it is quite a thinky little somewhat engine building Euro game. Uh, I like the big chunky workers, these huge dice. Now they're so nice and even 
with just not just the numbers but the little uh, icons on there too now these dice are huge and you just want to roll them uh, and you don't roll them in the game as you saw you just place them and you're you're changing them depending on what decisions you make uh, but I love the aspect of these big chunky dice because they feel so solid oh, man did I want to roll them but a nice uh, good components here uh, I like the thinking of this game when you're trying to balance the worker values and your actions because there's certain actions that you can't even take with certain levels of dice. So the actions that are really powerful that make you go down one in a worker value, well, you can't go there with a low value dice a lot of the times. And so you've got to think at the beginning of the turn is where am I going? What do I need to do? What am I trying to do right now? Uh, where do I need to get my workers in the future? So there's a lot of sort of tactical right now thinking, but there's also a lot of thinking of what am I going to be doing? What am I trying to get to two turns, three turns, five turns from now? And what do I need to do this turn in order to help make that happen while still getting the goals that I need to get done right now finished? And so I like that, balancing the worker values versus balancing the actions because some of the workers you want to have a very high value. Uh, you know, like for example, when you sell pies, um, you get big extra points when you place a die there and you sell a bunch of pies, but you're getting the extra points by the die that you place there. You place a six there, you're getting six points plus all the pies you sell. Well, that's great. It's going to be good to have at least one high die there uh, to be able to do that. But some of the dice, like if you use that six on another spot, it's not going to be as valuable. Like you're not going to put that on an upgrade spot or something like that because it, it, the high value doesn't do a whole lot. So some spots really need high value. Some of them just need like sort of a middle value to get something done. And I like that, that the values really come into play on some, but not others. But speaking of selling those pies uh, for those extra points, another cool thing about selling those pies is if you don't have a lot of big dice at that time and you're not going to get a whole lot of extra points, uh, but you know that you have the pie set up so that someone else is probably going to sell your pies for you, then let them. If they've taken the time to build up the dice, let them get the extra points because you couldn't do it anyways, and let them take the action and get you points. And you could be doing something else like leveling up those dice so later on you can do that. And I like that aspect of other people selling pies, maybe even forcing them to do it, letting them do it, and you getting the points for that. I thought that was a cool uh, way to, in to, to, to ratchet up the interaction and the gameplay. Uh, with the different players. Uh, I love the ability to spy. The spying really changes all your decisions as well as again the leveling up the dice because if your die is larger than the one below you in a couple of the spots in the game you can spy on them as I showed and and look at some of their secret ingredients and this is big because every time you're placing a die in one of the two spots you're looking around to see what dice do people still have left and can I be spied on and if so how badly. Is it just one? Uh, okay, maybe I'll I really need to go here, but man, this person's got a six. I'm putting a one. They're going to be able to see all my secret ingredients. I'm going to think twice, three, four times before doing that. Uh, but the ability to, to, to just spy on someone changes what you'll do. Uh, even just the threat of spying changes what you want to do that turn. I think that's a, a brilliant design choice there. Uh, the secret recipes is cool. Uh, when you're making those pies, you're trying to confound the information between what your secret pie is and, 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 and what's not, and also trying to figure out other people's secret pies and build those as well. Uh, and at the end of the game, you're also trying to guess secret recipes for extra points. I thought that was cool. Uh, anything I didn't like about the game. Well, when I first heard about this game, I heard it was going to be kind of like an, the game Alchemists, but streamlined and a little more simple, which sounded amazing to me because I loved Alchemists. But it, there was just too much going on. I love deduction, but with my deduction, I don't like too much stuff wrapped around. And I feel like that game kind of had that. I heard this was like was going to be that but in the end it turned out to be like deduction didn't seem to be as big a part of the game it almost seemed to be a supplemental part of the game which can be it's a con for me but could be a positive for you you might go oh this game's got deduction i hate logic stuff i hate going through the logic puzzles and figuring stuff out well the good news is it's not that big a part of the game um and if you don't like deduction you should still check this game out because it has way more to do with the euro style sort of engine building work doing your workers figuring out where to go tactically strategically figuring out what you're doing than figuring out other people's recipes is it important yes you can get points from it uh, if you almost don't even pay attention to deduction, can you still win? I'd say you probably could, um, and it's not that big a deal. For me, it was a con because I wanted deduction to play a bigger part in this game, and it didn't. Uh, so for me, it took it layers down, but for some, it might even raise it. So that's it for Pie Town. It's a good, solid worker placement game, uh, Euro-style game that I highly recommend. That's Pie Town. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.